Hello everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome back to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, we're going to be covering all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Sony Pictures has released the very first trailer for the upcoming adaptation of R.L. Stein's Goosebumps. Now, when this project was initially announced, I was very trepidatious about it. I did not... The, the only thing that I didn't like about it, because I loved the Goosebumps books, they were a staple of my childhood growing up. But when they announced that Jack Black was going to be playing the lead role in the movie, regardless of... This was before any of the other information that came out about the film. I was not happy about that, because... For a long time, I have not been a fan of Jack Black. He's He comes across as somebody who just, almost like he tries too hard. He never fits in um, in whatever role he was trying to do in the past, like, five years or so, four or five years. I haven't really liked a film of his in a long time. Now, when the synopsis came out about this film, I started to get on board with it because that sounded like it was a really cool approach. Instead of adapting one specific Goosebumps book, what they did, like, I'll, I'll just read out the official synopsis. So, instead of adapting one specific book, the story follows Zach. Upset about moving from a big city to a small town, the teenager Zach Cooper finds a silver lining when he meets a beautiful girl, Hannah, living right next door. But every, sil every silver lining has a cloud, and Zach's comes when he learns that, that Hannah has a mysterious dad who is revealed to be R.L. Stein, played by Jack Black, the author of the best-selling Goosebumps series. It turns out that there is a reason why Stein is so strange. He is a prisoner of his own imagination. The monsters that his books made famous are real and Stein protects his readers by keeping them locked up in their books. When Zack unintentionally unleashes the monsters from their manuscripts and they begin to terrorize the town, it's suddenly up to Stein, Zack, and Hannah to get all of them back in the books where they belong. Now, when I heard that, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. This, this is a really unique take on it. And then we finally get the trailer, and it's exactly what I was hoping, based on this description, that it would be like. It looks really fun. It still looks like it's geared for kids, but it looks like there's going to be a nostalgic effect to it. Because just watching the trailer, like they got all the descriptions and all the designs of all the characters right. Like you, you see the dummy, you see the abominable snowman, you see the gnomes, you see the, the werewolf. I mean, you see all of these. And they look just like you had imagined when you were a kid. And one of the things, as soon as I saw the trailer, I went, ooh, the CGI is not, not the greatest. But then it hit me that these are characters that are coming out of a book. So they would kind of have an artistic look to them. They would not be photorealistic. And I, I just started to warm up to it even more. It just it looks like it's a lot of fun. The music they played with it works really well. The humor looks like it works really well. But it's not pandering to just small children. It actually looks like it could be fun and entertaining. I am getting a little bit of a Night of the Museum vibe, which if it holds closer to the first one than it did the sequels, then I'm, I might be okay with that. I just, I do hope that it strives to be something better. Um, but it, it looks really fun. It looks really cool. Um, you know, I was, I, I was just really surprised by the overall trailer. I mean, it's really kind of almost reassuring to see Sony actually get now based on the trailer I haven't seen the movie I don't know about the overall quality it may end up being a terrible film but it looks like Sony might have just nailed one of its recent adaptations because they have been staggering it for the, the longest time with the exception of the 21 and 22 Jump Street movies I don't know of a franchise that's been under Sony's tenure but that's been loved by fans. I'm not counting James Bond because that's not necessarily Sony. That that's that's the the broccolis. Um, but yeah, I mean, th this could just end up being a really fun, slightly spooky, like a PG horror film movie. A and I'm really stoked about that. If you guys haven't watched the trailer, by the way, you can click the link in the description of this video um, because I definitely recommend to check it out. It just looks fun. It looks like it's going to be a, a hell of a good time. And I think out of a movie like this, this is the type of film that you want that from it. You don't want it to be, you know, really good character development. You don't, you, you don't need any of that kind of stuff because this is just meant to be fun. And I think they've, they've hit the chord with this. It, it looks like it's got a perfect blend of horror and comedy and appealing to kids while still appealing to adults. It, it looks almost like a, uh, no, I'm not even going to say that. That's, that's blasphemy. Um, but yeah, no, it, it just looks fun. It looks interesting. It looks, it looks cool. And there are a lot of possibilities and a lot of avenues that this could take it down. 
Um, I just, I hope that this is not going to be a one and done. I do hope that they try to set this up as a potential franchise. I just hope that the franchise is not, oops, somebody else has opened up a book. And I, I just, no, I hope that does not happen because that would just be stupid. That would be like doing the cruel intentions two and three type video on demand things. We're just going to recreate the first movie and call it the second one and the third one. So, I mean, I hope they don't do that, but this has the potential to be a franchise. And I just hope that if the movie is in fact good, that it gets a lot of the love that it would deserve. If again, if it's good, but yeah, I'm on board with this. I'm actually surprised to be really rooting for a Jack Black film, which I never thought I would say again. So it's set to open on October 16th. Again, if you guys haven't checked out the trailer, you can click the link in the description of this video. Um, and also put a comment down um, just to see whether or not you guys are impressed by the trailer. If you're looking forward to the movie, what you might have done differently if you were adapting a Goosebumps book, if you would have done a specific book, or if you would have kind of taken the approach, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. The movies are going to be opening up on October 16th, and if we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. And now we're on to the news that broke the internet yesterday. So... It was announced via The Hollywood Reporter and soon very quickly followed up on StarWars.com. Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the guys behind Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, The Lego Movie, and 21 and 22 Jump Street are officially signed on to produce and direct an upcoming Star Wars standalone film. And that movie will be about none other than a young Han Solo. This is how it's described. The story focuses on a young Han Solo. Uh, the story focuses on how young Han Solo became the smuggler, thief, and scoundrel whom Luke Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi first encountered in the cantina, cantina at Mos Eisley. Well, there's a lot of avenues that this could go down. Now, it's been heavily rumored ever since the, <clears throat> the Star Wars spinoff films would be coming out that Han Solo would in fact get his own. I think the top three were um, Han Solo, Boba Fett, and Yoda. And we're, we've already now got confirmed Han Solo one's on the way. It's pretty concrete that we're going to be getting a Boba Fett movie as well. Now, if that's the case, I mm, see, I don't know if I would really want to see a Boba Fett movie without Han Solo. I really, if they're going to do a Boba Fett movie, I want to see a movie about their feud. Because I think it was in uh, Return of the Jedi. Well, I mean, you, you look at in in the extended edition of... Uh, episode four, A New Hope, which that scene was originally shot back then. They just never included it. But you had Boba Fett there kind of circling around the Millennium Falcon when he's talking to Jabba the Hutt. Then in the second movie, he's the one who actually gets hired to go and take down Han Solo. And he even says, he's like, he's worth a lot to me. You know, so there, there's a budding feud. And then in, in Return of the Jedi, you hear, um, I think it's is it Chewie? I can't even remember who it was. I have, Oh, God, i got to watch these movies again. Uh, I think it was Chewie who's making a sound, and Han goes, what, Boba Fett? Boba Fett? Where? And then he turns around and hits him, jetpack malfunctions, and goes into the Sarlacc pit. So there's a feud there. And I don't necessarily want a Han Solo movie and a Boba Fett movie. I want them to be in the same movie. I want this movie to be about them. Maybe even also introduce a young Lando, because we know that Han and Lando have a long friendship. A long connection. So, how far back does that, in fact, go? You know, I mean, Lando used to be the one who owned the Millennium Falcon, and then he lost it to Han, uh, and Han now is the one who has the Millennium Falcon. Now, we don't know who's going to have it in The Force Awakens. We've still got time to, to figure that out, but this just opens up so many avenues that we know that there's going to be a young uh, Han Solo movie. Hopefully, Boba Fett's included in that. I don't want to see two separate movies. I want that to me works as its own film and then have another standalone movie for something completely different. Whereas instead of almost milking two different characters when you can have their best potential together in a movie at odds with one another, that to me is one of the coolest things. Like you really get a bounty hunter versus smuggler war. And I think that would be really cool to see. I think there's a lot of story possibilities they could do. Introduce a lot more characters and a lot more levels to the world. I mean, even if you did have a Han Solo and Boba Fett movie, they could introduce in the film universe level 1313 on Coruscant. So, because I, I wanted to play that game. That game looked incredible. The idea of that, the seedy underworld, the, 
the the mafia type aspect of it. I mean, there's so many cool aspects to that, and they could really be home in a home in a home solo in a Han Solo Boba Fett movie. So if they were to do both of them, I'm really on board with that. I just I hope that's the way that they're going because this has been confirmed to not be the same standalone movie that Josh Trank was working on. That movie has since been bumped. So that's most likely going to be the one that comes out in 2020. Um, I, I just hope that if that movie was in fact about Boba Fett, and this one's about Han Solo, they were in fact both the same project, and they're both being mashed together. Because that, to me, is where it could go. We don't need to see a Boba Fett origin. We've already got a Boba Fett origin. It was called Attack of the Clones. Regardless of what you think of it, it is canon. We don't need to see it. I mean, if you get... If you make Boba Fett like a character uh, or, or a mantle, like the the theory that's going around right now that they're going to try to turn Bond into more of a code name, whereas they do that with Boba Fett, if they made it more of a code name, that could be kind of interesting. But again, include that in a Han Solo movie. We don't need to see a full movie about a bounty hunter. You know why? Because Boba Fett's origins, like his entire reasonings are going to be unveiled and we don't need to see that. It's like when... Tropic Thunder came out. You remember the Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., Jack Black movie. Um, there was a scene-stealing character in that movie played by Tom Cruise, and he was uh, Les Grossman. And soon after that, everybody was talking about that character. And then it was announced that they were actually developing a spin-off film that focused just on him. That would have been a terrible idea. Not because the character isn't funny, but because the character worked because he was a secondary character. He only had a few scenes that popped up. If you make a full film about that character, you need to delve more into their person. You get a Maleficent scenario where it turns out, oh, they're not really the bad guy. They're actually a good guy. And No, no. Part of the reason Boba Fett works so well is because we don't know a lot about him. Keep him mysterious. You can, you can unveil a couple of things. Let us know a little bit about him, but don't give us the whole gamut. Don't give us everything. You know, if you have him in a film with Han Solo, it allows us to further explore Han Solo, see where he came from. I hope they completely disregard that whole wife thing. I still haven't caught up on that on the comic books, but if they were to do this, it just makes sense to me that those two should be in a film together. Now that begs the question, who is going to play a young Han Solo? My number one choice ever since I saw... Uh, Kingsman was Taron Egerton. Taron Egerton to me, you know, I mean, it, he's got a really thick British accent, which is the one thing that worries me. It, a lot of people have that thick of a British accent, it's almost impossible for them to hide it. And Han Solo is very American. He's very American accent. So, I mean, Harrison Ford didn't even try. And I don't think he was directed to, because George Lucas is very infamous about hating directing actors. He'd rather do animation. Um, because then he doesn't have to deal with actors. That's an actual quote by George Lucas. Um... So yeah, I mean, there's, you know, we'll see what exactly is going on. Apparently the script is either being worked on right now or is already completed. And it was being written by Lawrence Kasdan and his son, John Kasdan. So, I mean, with this movie having a release date set in, in May of 2018, I mean, production is not going to be getting started on this film until probably early 2017, late 2016, early 2017, at the very earliest. So the other question is, what happens with all the other projects that Lord and Miller were working on? Well, they were. I, I'm pretty sure that they weren't even going to be involved outside of a producerial capacity on the 23 Jump Street Men in Black crossover. They were probably just going to be working on the script and producing it. Same with the Lego movie sequels. We already know they've got a different director uh, announced for the Lego movie sequel. So they're not going to be humming that, but they are writing it. And I think they've actually finished the script or are very close to finishing the script. Then you have the uh, fact that they're writing and developing the Flash movie for DC. Well, they're probably still not going to direct that. They're probably going to be on as producers and they're going to write the script. And then what was the other project that they were part of? Oh, the animated Spider-Man film. I don't think that's even going to happen, to be completely honest. I'm not on board with it. I don't think it should be theatrical. Um, I, I'm not... To me, an animated Spider-Man film is something that should stay on television or directed DVD. I mean, you look at you look at the DC animated films. I'm not saying that Lord and Miller are of the quality of the DC animated films. Lord and Miller are definitely above that. But the way that the animated films come across, and this film may be completely different, but the way that it comes across, it's it's made for animation. It's made to be watched at home. It's not made to be seen in a theater. And I don't know if they could do that with a Spider-Man film. It also depends on whether or not it's going to be a 3D animated or if it's going to be kind of like a 2D cel-shaded animated film. There's still a lot of possibilities with that. So we still don't know. But if this is the case, like who's going to play him? 
I would love to see Taron Edgerton, but there are a couple of other roles or a couple of other actors that could play that. When it comes to if Lando is going to show up, who's going to play a young Lando? Now, there's a b- even bigger question. I don't even have an idea as to who could play. I mean, the obvious choice is Michael B. Jordan, but he's noted for everything. Um, although that would be amazing casting. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know who they could go with. I don't know what kind of story elements they could do. Uh, personally, I would have rather them done a different film than a Han Solo film, but I'm still excited to see what possibilities they could do if, in fact, it is a Han Solo Boba Fett movie, or if at least Boba Fett is featured in the movie. That's the film I want to see, if you're going to use those characters. I want to see that film. I want to see their feud, their cat and mouse game. I think that could be really fun. There's a, that's, there's a lot of Star Wars elements that could be addressed in that. There's a lot of new avenues in the Star Wars universe that could be explored with a movie like that. There's just a lot of possibilities. I mean, this even, if they're doing a young Han Solo movie, could he show up? Could Han Solo himself show up in Rogue One? Because Rogue One is set about four years before, I think it's three or four years or just before A New Hope. So just before we meet him. And the basic storyline of this is the story focuses on how young Han Solo became the smuggler, thief, and scoundrel who Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi first encountered in the cantina. cantina. So... Could a portion of the movie be set just before, you know, just before um, episode four? Could it be set during Rogue One and have like a little bit of a crossover sequence? Who knows? I mean, we're still so far out. We still know very little. And all these reports, by the way, of potential footage of Rogue One or anything about Rogue One being talked about on uh, their panel on, I think it's... See the Thursday. I think it's Friday morning. Um, bogus, garbage. They're not going to do it. It's illegal for them to do it right now because of the the deal that they have with Paramount. They cannot talk or advertise about anything involving Rogue One until after Rogue Nation has gone to theaters. I'm I'm not even sure if that deal will allow them to talk about it at D23 because D23 is in the middle of August. I don't know if if Rogue Nation will have had its worldwide release schedule i i don't i'm not 100 sure on that i don't know when that embargo will actually lift for them to be able to start advertising it announce casting i mean it's probably likely we're going to get that at d23 but it, we still don't know it's still up in the air so who knows i mean it's set right now for a may 25th 2018 whether or not Lord and Miller are able to develop the type of movie we think they're going to develop, which a lot of people are assuming it's going to be a comedy, I don't think it's going to be. I just think that they have, they understand this character. They know how to get properties out that some people are skeptical about or you might not have any avenues to go down. These are the right guys to go to. This, however, and they even came out and said that this is the first project that they've worked on where it was, seemed like a good idea from the get-go. Because you look at Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, pretty risky. You look at the Lego movie, really risky. 21 Jump Street making it as a comedy. Nobody thought that movie was going to succeed. And yet all of them were amazing. So, I mean, hopefully they're they're able to really craft a cool idea. I hope, I hope that they get a Boba Fett Han Solo combined movie. I really hope that's what we're getting. But as it stands right now, this is going to open on May 25th, 2018. So we're probably going to be getting some more information about this. I assume we're going to get a full announcement on uh, Friday. I, th- I think that this was actually something they were hoping to keep quiet until then, but unfortunately it didn't, it, the Hollywood Reporter got out. They had to put it up on StarWars.com and all this kind of stuff. So who knows? Movie's going to be opening up on May 25th. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Lord and Miller directing, about a Han Solo spinoff film, whether or not you think that the right way to go about it is to do a Boba Fett Han Solo combined story and see these two going head to head against one another. I think that's the right way to go, but... I may be alone in that theory. So let me know in the comment section below. Movies opening up on May 25th, 2018. If we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for this episode of Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click that subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And also give our Facebook page a like at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you ever have a topic or question you'd like to have talked about on the show, you can go ahead and put a comment in the comment section, or you can email me at moviewnewswithnicholson at gmail.com. And I will try to get to as many as I can whenever I'm able to, when there's no stories. Um, This week, I'm going to be loading the channel with new episodes. It's probably going to be two or three a day um, until probably Sunday or Monday, and then I'll get back onto the regular schedule. 
uh, starting next week. So I'm really excited about this. But again, drop a comment in the comment section or email me at movienewswithnicholson at gmail.com. Uh, if you guys ever have a topic, question, or uh, property or anything like that you want to have discussed. So um, without any further ado, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.